does this type of work all the time. Um, she's presented with NCA CPA for I think 15 years. And I think you'll find the presentation really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. been watching a PowerPoint presentation and wanted to put a pencil in your eye or something? <laughs> How many of you have contributed to Death by PowerPoint? Yeah, it happens. Um, how many of you would rather do anything but speak in public? I get a lot of that as well. All right. Well, this seminar is designed to help you hopefully put together presentations that allow you to remain calm and relaxed and at the same time produce something that people actually want to watch and want to get involved in. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, out on the uh, dashboard that you all have is a workbook that I usually give out with this. So I don't give out my presentations up front, and we're going to talk about why that is as we go through our seminar. Do any of you know what this term means? Yes, you can go home. That was very good. So it's the fear of speaking in public. That is exactly what it is. And interestingly enough, 75% of all adult humans have this fear. So it's very common, in fact, so common that, does everybody know who this is, Jerry Seinfeld? Love this quote. If you're at a funeral and you have this fear like everybody does, you do better in the casket than you would giving the eulogy. All right? So we're gonna talk about ways that we can relax and not have this because this is hugely important. Employers hire based on your ability to do speaking, to do presentations, and to do a good job with it. Employers value people who can communicate well with others. So it's an important skill to learn. Uh, I will tell you up front, I would never have thought that I would be doing this back when I was a younger person. I was the kid that made straight A's all the way through school, very retentive about my grades, but I was terrified to speak in public. So every time in speech class, which was required, they had us give a speech, I would skip, which was like totally alien to me. Because I knew I could go the last day and make up the speeches, there'd be nobody there but nervous people like me. Anybody ever skip a speech class? I see a couple of hands, you guys know what I'm talking about, there you go. Um, when I was about halfway through college, my father heard me admitting this to my sister and saying, I have a speech coming up, I'm gonna skip the class, and she was like, oh my gosh, you're great, and I was like, I don't care, <laughs> I'll make it up at the end. And my father walked around the corner and said, absolutely not. No daughter of mine is gonna let something like this defeat her. So my dad started dragging me with him weekly to his Toastmasters meetings. Now, have any of you been to Toastmasters or heard about it, know about it? it has nothing to do with toast. Who can tell me about Toastmasters? What is it? Y'all are not in the front of the room, so you can speak. Yeah, it's how to learn how to speak. You get to practice speaking. So they give you all kinds of different opportunities to speak on all different kinds of topics, different types of speeches, and they coach you through it as a group. So if you make a mistake, they call you out on it. They tell you what you need to do better the next time. For two years, I did that. And at the end of the two years, as if by magic, some of my college professors called me and they said, we need you to come teach a class. The old Holly would have screamed no and gone into the fetal position. The new Holly said, I guess I better try it. I've learned how to do this, I might as well put it into practice. And that turned into a lifetime of doing this. So I'm telling you that up front because if I can do it, everybody in here can, absolutely. All right, this is what everybody messes up with the presentation. There are actually three parts to the presentation. You have the speaker, you have the visuals, and you have a handout if you're gonna want a good presentation. So let me ask you, based on these three things up here, which one is in charge of the message? The speaker. Which one is in charge of providing kind of backup visuals, um, any of things to kind of put a period or an exclamation point behind what the speaker says? PowerPoint. The PowerPoint or whatever you're using. And then what are the handouts for? Yeah, things that you want to look at later. We're not going to remember everything that we learn in a presentation. We're, in fact, we'll talk about the abysmal low statistic of how much we actually do remember. So what we want to do is we want to make sure as speakers that we know our message. We're able to stand up and talk about the message without having to go like this. Do y'all ever see people do this and read the PowerPoint slides? Do y'all need people to read to you? 
Not usually. <laughs> so the speaker needs to use this as a backup. It's supposed to basically put a little bit of visual punch in the presentation. All right, keeping that in mind then, we're going to talk about 10 things that will turn any presentation into a work of art. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to profile our audience. Um, I have spoken, like he said, to NCA CPA members for about 15 years. Have, have any of you ever sat in on any of my classes before? I'm curious. Or seminars, a couple of you have. Very good. All right. So I know this group. I love this group. I've spoken here. I've spoken in Asheville. I've spoken at the beach. All to NCA CPA. So I know my audience, but the first time I spoke, I had to profile my audience. We're going we're gonna to talk about how to do that. You want to come up with an objective. Why are we speaking? What are we supposed to be learning? What am I presenting? What do the people who are coming hope to see? And then, believe it or not, the best presentations you construct by going to the end first. Why do you suppose we do that? When you walk out of here, what are you going to remember? The end. The last thing I've said, because we are all creatures of habit and we all have the attention spans of gnats, and that's going to be the most recent thing we've heard. So begin at the end. Then we go back and we come up with a grand opening, something that's going to capture attention. And then everything else is a sandwich in between, so then we come up with the body. How am I getting from point A to point B? We also then talk about condensing. Now this is something that's hard to do with your group, because I'm told exactly how long I need to talk. Why is that important to you people? CPEs, y'all know the answer to this. All right, so I, my presentations can expand and they can contract. I was talking with Jackie on my way in and she said, you know, what were you doing yesterday? How was your day yesterday? I said, well, I was prepping for this. Because the last time I did this presentation, it was like this and I had to peel it back in for you people. Okay, so the body's gonna change depending on your time and, when your, ability, and your ability to condense. And then we are gonna talk about visuals. All right, that's a big part of it. When you, how many of you are, would describe yourself as number people? I'm curious. Okay. When you show humans numbers or a chart or graph, which one do they look at first? Why? You guys just said you're number people. Yeah, humans are visual. We just are. So it doesn't matter what kind of information we're most comfortable with, we're going to like the pictures first. What do we put in books when children are learning to read? Pictures. What, would, what do we wish we had as adults who read? <laughs> right? Okay. So we're going to talk about the importance of visuals, and then we're going to talk about drama. Now, when you talk in public, when you're giving a presentation, you don't have to become a theater major. Okay? That's not the kind of drama that I'm talking about. Drama is what you do to keep people involved. All right, so a little bit of drama, for example, is talking about Jerry Seinfeld's quote. A little bit of drama might be me giving you a little bit of a story about my background. That's the drama that's in pieces. It's stories. It's things that will help people remember. And then we have to worry about recall because, as I said before, humans have the attention spans of gnats. Am I right? So, believe it or not, you're going to remember very little of this presentation unless I do my job very well. One of the things I've already done to try to help you remember what I do is I've given them a workbook that you have out on your dashboard that you can look at if you forget everything that we've talked about. And we'll talk about some other things as well. And then this is the last one. To do a really good presentation, you have to rehearse. You absolutely have to rehearse. You have to know your stuff. And I'm going to talk about um, a new style of presentation at the very end. They didn't ask me to talk about it today. I would have rather talked about it because it's the hot new thing that we do with presentations. Have any of you heard of Ignite speeches or Pachakacha speeches? Very good, got one person in here. So we're going to talk about what that is, and for those of you that think I just sneezed, I'll explain the words. <laughs> all right. So let's talk first of all about profiling your audience. If you had to give a presentation, what would you want to know about your audience? What they're interested in. What they're interested in, that's a good one. Experience level. Experience level, good. Why are they there? That's real important. Anybody else? <coughs> yes? Demographics. Demographics, absolutely, that's huge. So if I'm talking to a group of millennials or Gen Zers, the youngins, I know I got some youngins here, but right, a lot of us are not. <laughs> if I'm talking to them and I make a reference to 
something that happened in the 80s. Are they going to get it? No. Likewise, if I'm talking to a group of, of people my age, and I talk about something that's really hip in the pop culture right now, y'all are not going to get it. So you really do have to know your 